Hello and welcome to another video. So we're taking a look at an aggro dragon. It's definitely a pretty straightforward deck as most things are designed to just be aggressive. Flood the board, use Phoenix Raider, use Prime Dragon Keeper, get that damage in and win the game. So we're going to get right into it and check it out. You really can't get much more straightforward than this deck. It's literally just play as much of your curve as possible while making sure you can flood consistently. And going up against Shadow, that should be something that should show off fairly well. As Shadow does like to flood board pretty heavily, meaning you can really take advantage of a Dragon Rider to just obliterate things. Or Phoenix Rider, whichever, I can't remember. I'm really bad at remembering things like that. Either way, we have a Dragon Oracle, which is a perfect setup for the beginning of the game, especially if our opponent didn't play anything on turn one. Even going first here, we should still be pretty right, honestly. Going first is the biggest advantage for aggro decks anyway, so having that advantage is definitely going to help us in the long run. So our Dragon Cleaver Roy is going to be our opener there, as it's our first forward to hit the board, and giving us Dragon Life Blade, which will give us even more ramp capabilities, putting us even further ahead in points against our opponent. And there is Phoenix Rider, so I was mistaken to start with, it is Phoenix Rider. An absolutely crazy, crazy card for this type of deck, where you can really get that thing up quite high and use it as your finisher pretty easily. So, Altered Fate, not surprising, looks like they're digging things out, they're going for a PTP shadow I would guess, and considering they already have 22 shadows on turn 4, that is absolutely nuts. But we're going to be pretty solid ourselves, flooding the board and setting up a Dragon's Nest this early, along with the fact that we're already at 8 on turn 4, which is, well, in our case turn 5, which is perfect. Fran Monster Girl, not surprising, using Curse to try and remove what they can, and setting up a Bellinus. So as things stand, we're looking at a decent chunk of damage here. We actually should be looking very close to lethal, if not lethal, on this turn. As all we need is this dragon to get us to 6 damage, plus the Evo and the stuff on board, will put us extremely close to just ending this outright. So that's a comfortable 8 damage to face, plus the extra 4, leaving them at just 4 health. Not much to come back from there, you would need a complete clear here to really survive. Demeter trying to hit that 8-6, eight, eight, that's really what they're after. Completely missing, such a disappointment, but at least it was a good effort. Now this is a matchup that I should be fairly favoured in, I mean, Blood isn't exactly the strongest deck against aggro decks, as it does weaken itself as well. Dark Feast Bat, while being good, means that it needs to get to 7. If you can't reach that, you will lose quite easily, so you've got to be very careful when Blood players start really protecting themselves. If they don't protect themselves, they are in deep trouble though. So it's good when they're dealing damage to themselves, not so good when they're not taking damage from you though. So our open is pretty weak. We are going second in this matchup, which means we are on the weaker side of this matchup. But we can start off with a nice Dragon Ute, getting it out. A 1-3 is a solid body against Blood. Not going to be easily counterable. Dire Bond is an okay setup, but probably a little too early. I think maybe, maybe just a little too early. Our Dragon Cleaver Roy is going to get our setup again. Hopefully we can ramp up fairly well. It won't be the quickest ramp compared to the last game, but it will definitely hopefully get us there. So this one was a little convoluted, I probably could have come up with a better way to deal with this, but I mean, we ended up doing it. I went with the Dragon Life Blade and the White Frost. If I had have probably used the Evo instead, I could have cleaned these out and had my Evo spread be a little bit better, but that would have been about it. I can't think of many other ways that would have been really decent to deal with that. We still have the Force of Dragon Ute, which is a super solid card. And we should be able to take this blood out fairly well with Phoenix Rider, since they should put themselves pretty close to death on their own. Restless Parish, not really a big problem right here. All we have to do is clean this board out, go face, and that's pretty much it. There's not much to that turn. They are healing up though, which is always a problem, and Demonic Ram just uh, really makes the problem worse. It's one of those things that's just like, wow, Ram, really? That's what we have to deal with? Fortunately, Blood does have a lot of healing tools, which does make this matchup a little trickier, but we should still be reasonably favoured playing an aggro deck. 
The bigger problem is that we went second, which is a pretty big disadvantage. So I went for the Prime Dragon Keeper, probably the worst mistake ever, playing White Worm instead of playing my my other Dragon 3-drop there, which would have actually cleaned out both of these and left me with my Evo Prime instead. I was actually really sad that I made that mistake. I really shouldn't have. It should have been a very simple play. But I just happened to accidentally hit the wrong key when I was going for the card and swiped it up and it was like, oh no, too late. So, we still had to work with that though, luckily we did get another Prime Dragon Keeper, which means we can at least make up for that a little bit here. Getting a couple of pings and maybe a quick Evo. Putting them to 6. That should put them within range of, Dra of Phoenix Rider, as long as they play a couple of cards. We really only need them to play 2 things. Alright, maybe a little bit more, but this Blood Wolf puts them at 4. So if they do play just one more card, actually no, they don't even need to play one more card. That Blood Wolf plus our Dragon will be enough. Because that does put two followers on board and that will take Sphenic Rider to four. Your strength is for me. Giving us a pretty perfect lethal. Honestly, this deck isn't too bad. It does fairly well and it can be reasonably consistent. The only real problem is that you really lack in some matchups. Being able to deal with control decks is very difficult. Being able to deal with other aggro decks isn't too bad. And being able to deal with mid-range decks, usually you can win out as well. It's pretty okay in the current meta because blood damages itself, which helps you out. Um, Shadow floods the board, which also helps you out. So those two factors really help this. D-Shift can be a bit of a problem, especially if they clear your stuff continuously. It's really hard to build a board against that, and they will then wipe you out. Roach is mediocre, just because it's Roach, and it's really difficult to have a decent matchup against that without just warding or healing all the time. Otherwise, I would definitely recommend this deck if you've got the cards for it already. If you've got the Prime Dragon Keepers and the White Dragon Oop, we're looking for a Dragon deck to really clean things out. This is the one I'd recommend you play, as it does fairly well. Of course, you can go for straight ramp and big drops, but that'll cost a lot more legendaries and golds and stuff like that that which will become more of a problem so if you've got the cards give it a go it's worth some fun we're almost at the next expansion anyway what have you got to lose if you already have the cards till next time see ya